Good morning to one and all. Chair Ms. Jean. Manjusa, we can't hear you. Am I audible? Yeah, no, you're audible. Uh, so the diversity and volume of imagery and remote sensing data are growing rapidly. Uh, uh, drone, aerial, and other satellite imageries and other type of uh, remotely sensed data are expanding the opportunities in nearly every facet of decision making. Imagery can now provide communities with insights into nearly every aspect of operations and urban planning, natural resource management, and even uh, faster disaster response. The key is integrating this imagery into GIS, making it possible uh, to visualize and analyze and share the data across the organization for better decision making. Advances in spatial and spectral and uh, say temporal resolution over the past years have greatly expanded the opportunities for practical application of remote sensing data. It plays the vital role for the content that covers the world. Oh. Imagery, as we know, acts as the foundational source for any information and decision making. Starting from the pollution control, that is the air quality estimations that are told to us from time to time to natural resource conservations or climate changes. Imagery forms the basic foundation for all this analysis. Uh, the fire, uh, to, uh, to estimate the forest fire within, uh, within the forest, say so the recent Sariska forest damage that have occurred can be estimated and the extent of this forest uh, damage or forest management can also be analyzed. The urban tree plantation uh, 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 is nowadays uh, more uh, important and can be uh, done using uh, by simply getting the hotspot analysis of the area with respect to air qualities and the decision makers can go ahead and uh, pl uh, plan the uh, tree plantations. In cases of uh, property assessments or uh, in cases of uh, parcel uh, based uh, viewers or uh, say property management issues, imagery plays the major role. It can also uh, be useful for monitoring the oceans, which subsequently can help in uh, the uh, finding the potential of uh, fishing zones. Imagery also forms the basis for uh, of information for uh, some of us who are working with uh, intimate animal conservations or road management. So, uh, recently, we have seen that drone uh, drone imagery and high resolution satellite imagery has proven very uh, uh, has proven a vital uh, key for damage assessment due to various disasters or uh, uh, say in agriculture due to uh, in agriculture monitoring or crop insurance companies methane gas monitoring or uh, the plant health uh, plant health measurements or various NDVIs or indices to understand the crop uh, health over these seasons have also uh, have uh, is also uh, where the imagery has been used extensively so high resolution imagery can also help us in uh, say building the footprints that may uh, help in parcel chain detection or say road track detections using ai ml and deep learning methods India definition for uh, imagery is uh, more than just rasters. We can also uh, treat point cloud, uh, point clouds, uh, lidar data set, or motion imageries uh, such as the uh, videos, videos, etc., as uh, rasters. 
So uh, it is not just imagery that we're talking about here. We can also talk about the LIDAR data set, the uh, videos that we uh, capture on the fly using drone uh, satellite data set. Now, oriented imagery is a, a unique class of imagery, which is uh, basically not collected with the intent of creation of uh, ortho mosaic, but is very useful uh, for visualization. So it, in, it may include the mobile mapping system, the 3D, uh, 360 degrees panoramic view, inspection of, uh, say, utility towers, so oblique drone collections. As uh, the intent of these imagery, as I mentioned, is not to create ortho maps. Uh, the geometry of these may not be correct, but can be used for AIML tasks to develop qualitative uh, information rather than quantitative uh, uh, quantitative information. Full motion video, uh, full motion video is uh, ArcGIS image analyst uh, capability for playing and analyzing the geospatial data. So, if we have a uh, if we have a video of a road construction or uh, we have to uh, track a uh, track a uh, uh, bus or any any vehicle over the uh, drone uh, over the drone uh, live stream that can also be done using the uh, full motion video of uh, uh, capabilities of ArcGIS. Uh, the organizations are increasingly demanding the uh, ability to integrate this high resolution satellite imagery into geographic information system. So, ISRI ArcGIS Pro Image Analyst Extension offers on the fly image processing capabilities, reducing the substantial amount of time and storage uh, uh, space required by conventional image processing uh, techniques. So if there are some intermediate products that the user does not want to store and just wants to have the final products that needs to be stored within the uh, within his project or within his, <coughs> for, his uh, for his processing, that can also be done using uh, image analyst capability. Coming over to the point clouds, point clouds, as I mentioned, is a vector data set, but, can be, but uh, its output is uh, 3D mesh uh, ortho photos and therefore is regard, uh, and therefore is, and therefore is uh, required for the various, uh, various image, uh, uh, image uh, analysis. So these point cloud, uh, point cloud uh, uh, LIDAR data sets are basically used for auto generation, auto map generations, and the EM and DSMs, in fact, and these are uh, then used for further uh, building extractions and measuring the heights of uh, the building, and so on and so. On. Uh, Geo AI, uh, basically AI and ML for uh, extracting uh, features, have proved very vital in uh, remote sensing. So the change, uh, the, the changes over an urban area, or the extent of urbanization, or the uh, or the Car detection, solar panel detections, all can be uh, used by uh, all can be uh, basically analyzed or detected or extracted using uh, the high resolution imagery data. Then uh, ArcGIS provide tools for raster analytics on imagery data set as well. We have more than four, uh, 1400 or 1500 uh, tools that can that work only on the raster data set. And uh, apart from that, we also have uh, the uh, work. Uh, model builders wherein you can build your own workflows to work with raster imagery. So as we know, the content uh, in uh, imagery platform is coming from various, uh, are coming in various uh, formats and in various uh, modalities and, uh, and from various sensors. Uh, so we have, uh, high, uh, we can, uh, basically we have to work with High resolution uh, satellite imagery to drone data sets to lidar data set to elevation models and so on and so forth the list is endless so these contents need to be uh, is basically uh, the organizations are using these imagery to support precision mapping and reality capture so they can uh, create accurate uh, site models base maps and other foundational contents uh, that supports their organization these content can then be uh, are then further used for exploring uh, or analyzing uh, and analyzing and uh, getting the observations such as in case of uh, highway monitoring we need to uh, basically uh, plan the entire workflow of how a road uh, a roadway or a highway is needs to be constructed that can be uh, analyzed and monitored using the uh, using the uh, platform 
and uh, and then they are using also using this imagery uh, to identify the spatial pattern that help them understand the natural and built up uh, environments such as uh, urban growth uh, crop yields land covers habitat loss and many many more uh, uh, many more uh, patterns so we need a system that can integrate all these things so uh, that and manage the capabilities uh, and the uh, ArcGIS is basically designed to bring all of this together. So uh, it is a system for managing the imagery and it provides photogrammetry, AIML, and uh, raster analytic tools that support each and every use case for the uh, specific users. So the capabilities and functions uh, and tools are provided, uh, are geared basically to, towards the uh, image analyst who uh, perform manual image interpretation to advance remote sensing uh, processing or, or feature extraction. So we can do uh, from class, uh, from the basic classification of our uh, land use land cover mapping to a change detection that have occurred over a period of time. So supposing if a user has historical data set and want to do a change detection for uh, say 10 years or 20 years of data set, that can easily be done using uh, image analysts in our pro. Uh, and this change detection is done based on uh, pixel uh, classification, or it can be done using uh, the thematic maps that is the class already classified the uh, images if the user have, or it can be uh, it is done using the uh, different algorithms such as CCDC and uh, land uh, and land tractor. Similarly, the uh, classification uh, classification or uh, 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 basically the uh, classification of the imagery can be done uh, in unsupervised or supervised manner. The spectral analysis, uh, so especially in cases of agriculture wherein the spect uh, wherein uh, we need to uh, have uh, the crop health monitoring uh, being monitored every uh, for each and every 15 day cycle, we can do a spectral analysis for the same. Then uh, as mentioned, uh, there is multidimensional analysis, which means that we can also uh, input the data in the form of net, uh, .NET, CD, uh, not .NET CDF, and HDF uh, formats, which are basically uh, the, uh, I mean, for example, the oceanic uh, information or the rain data set, those can also be analyzed. And depending on the uh, data set available to us, we can generate the trend for the same. And finally, predict if, uh, depending on the trend, if uh, what sort of uh, the information can be gathered. So supposing if we have a rain data set for last 10 years, we can uh, basically generate the trend of the same and predict using that trend analysis, how the, uh, how the rainfall may be for the another two years. We can also perform very advanced raster functions. And as mentioned, these functions may, uh, may or may not be stored within uh, your uh, storage till the time the user wants it. These may be some intermediate raster function that user just needs to do for visualization. We can also do terrain analysis and other hydrological modeling using the R. So, uh, as mentioned, imagery coming from all data sets, be it uh, in, uh, it can be in TIFF format or it can be in GDP2 or HDF formats. And these can be uh, coming from uh, various data, uh, from various sensors having their own metadata files. So ArcGIS uh, basically gives you an optimized data models for uh, most of these data set that are coming in. So starting with the mosaic data set, the mosaic data set is basically uh, the unique offering from ISRI India, ISRI uh, that is uh, giving you uh, uh, that gives you the liberty to mosaic data uh, to mosaic data from different sensors within one uh, within one uh, layer, and you can uh, analyze the same using uh, by uh, basically selecting the data set that the user wants to collect. Similarly, the point cloud for, uh, for point cloud uh, data set we have last data sets. Then for oriented imagery, uh, the, we can create an oriented imagery catalog that is OIC within the ArcPro, and that can be used for uh, use on the web uh, web uh, applications and can be shared across. We can also work with the multidimensional in the form of uh, .crf. So, so .crf is again ISRI, uh, ISRI's form, uh, format for cloud raster uh, storage. So all these dataset models uh, for different uh, so. Uh, 
why these models are uh, important is because when we have these imageries and coming from different modalities and different in different format, it needs to be stored and analyzed in one platform. In one uh, for an uh, for say an area of interest, we need to uh, see which all imagery is there with me, which all data set is there with me, and then based on those, I want to do my further analysis. So uh, that's uh, so that sort of. Uh, of uh, basically analysis can be done using these optimized data models present in ArcGIS. Coming over to uh, these uh, models can then be shared and streamed over uh, the web, which is uh, then uh, which can then be used by uh, the organization for their further analysis. So uh, uh, by sharing, uh, sharing is one of the unique capability of ISRI, in, uh, ISRI uh, or ArcGIS, which allows the user to uh, basically. Uh, Get rid of the restricted uh, data uh, data set. So uh, the data set is not uh, just uh, confined to one desktop or one system. It is it can now be shared within the organization over their internet with everyone, or depending on uh, who the user or who the user or creator wants that uh, access to be. Those so, uh, that uh, can be done. Coming over to the uh, drone solutions uh, and the reality capture. So, uh, drone is basically increasing uh, the uh, capture of data set, uh, capturing of uh, various data set, and these input imageries can be in the form of uh, satellite imageries or real capture can be in the form of scan film. So, these needs to be processed as well. So, uh, uh, in the form of say DSM or point cloud mesh or other uh, other D, uh, DTMs. Uh, Creations. Uh, then uh, oriented imagery also can be processed and managed using uh, the RGS image analyst. Now, these data set again uh, needs to be shared across the organization to further analyze and model. So, supposing if a drone data set uh, is captured for uh, a highway mapping project, so those drone data set needs to be uh, created. Some of them uh, may be used for ori uh, in the Im oriented imagery category. And some can be used on to further have an ortho, uh, ortho mosaics or creation of the EMs and DTMs. And these can then be shared across the organization for visual interpretations or monitoring or for uh, the further planning of how that highway will come along. And we can also do all the uh, all these analysis on web. So, uh, coming over to the mosaic data set, mosaic data set, as we know, the uh, Data set is basically uh, coming from various uh, imageries that is scan maps, lidar, elevation, and categoricals, other thematic maps. So these uh, so these uh, mosaic data set can support multiple uh, data raster sources. It can handle uh, more than uh, 50 uh, sensor types and can help in uh, providing the on-the-fly uh, uh, raster analytics and dynam uh, dynamic mosaicing. We can use High scalable, highly scalable, and a huge volume of uh, imagery data set in a mosaic. Uh, we can also perform on the fly uh, raster functions on the same. So, for a mosaic data set, if I want to, uh, so a mosaic data set, if I want to perform a change detection from, say, the, uh, uh, 10 uh, years of data set, that can be done using on the fly raster functions. So, the list of raster functions supported are uh, shown in this slide. Now we are also uh, offering. Uh, we are also offering the raster functions that support the uh, SAR data set. So uh, be it radar set two or Sentinel data set, we can uh, work with SAR data set also in in Arc Pro. Going over to the multidimensional uh, raster data set. So multidimensional analysis tools and capabilities allows us to perform uh, the various complex analysis and to explore scientific trends and anomalies. So, uh, multi, uh, it represents basically uh, the temporal data set and the tools are available within, uh, uh, within, the, uh, within the software that allows you to modify uh, uh, the existing multidimensional raster, generate the metadata in the uh, mosaic raster data set and can perform various transformation. You can summarize them, you can generate trend, uh, the trend, trend using the same. Our uh, Image server is a part of uh, ArcGIS Enterprise and provides a distributed computing 
and storage system that powers the analytic uh, uh, processing and serving of large collections of imagery, elevation data, raster, and other remotely sensed data set. It allows you to basically assemble, process, analyze, and manage large collections of overlapping multi-resolution imagery and the raster data set from different sources. You can also publish these. So, uh, like mentioned, uh, these are the five, uh, the five capabilities of the ArcGIS is basically the content, the mapping of those content, and uh, basically the visual, uh, the analysis, and finally the visualization of such content. So, ArcGIS server provides four key capabilities for working with these large, uh, large uh, volumes of imagery and rasters. So, uh, these are uh, the dynamic image services enable web accessible uh, imagery layer which have processing applied on the fly as the data is assessed via desktop, web and mobile applications. Then uh, we have the hosted imageries and the tiled imageries uh, that are used for the managing for managing these uh, high uh, resolution data set. Currently, we have uh, uh, image on the desktop uh, for the imagery tools or remote, uh, remote sensing applications. We have image analyst on the enterprise side, uh, side, we have the image server capabilities that can help you analyze uh, the uh, raster function on the fly. So, supposing if we have a published uh, imagery or uh, raster data set for our organization, the, uh, it is not, uh, since it is not uh, uh, limited to one desktop now, any, any user or any uh, person with the user credentials can work on that imagery and can perform his or her own raster uh, analytics for the uh, other persons uh, for uh, the benefit of the organization. Then there is a SaaS based application known as ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online, wherein the user will be, uh, the user can have the credentials and uh, it can publish the uh, imagery to the, uh, to the server. Uh, provided by EC, and then uh, he can work on the, uh, the platform and analyze the uh, results. Finally, we also have an ArcGIS image dedicated that can be uh, that can be established with the existing cloud uh, or existing uh, any cloud uh, information that the organization al already have. So. Uh, coming over, living uh, coming over, the Living Atlas is a repository of. Uh, uh, a repository of data set that is available for the users. Uh, users, so uh, it has the Landsat 8 and uh, Sentinel uh, data set freely, uh, freely available for uh, usage of uh, for the users. Then it also has various soil maps and uh, various elevation models that are present for different, uh, different uh, basically areas. For India, we have uh, the uh, Living Atlas content that is available in uh, in sorts of uh, boundaries in uh, in pop uh, population uh, in cases of other necessary content. Uh, so uh, with Acro the three dot uh, we have also uh, in uh, included the radar capabilities in ArcGIS. So uh, uh, now uh, the Sentinel one data set uh, which is available. Uh, freely uh, for usage of the uh, for the usage can be uh, used within the ArcGIS Pro. The raster pro uh, it can use the data models such as mosaic data set and the raster products that are available. The pre-processing, as we know, the SAR data set is very uh, useful for us during these monsoon seasons, and uh, since it can penetrate cloud and haze, so uh, we can use this uh, throughout. Uh, I mean, uh, for many many applications from. Uh, say uh, agriculture monitoring to ship detections to uh, other uh, flood mapping applications. So all uh, central data or any SAR data set needs to be pre-processed to be free of any noise or any uh, radiometric uh, errors that were already present within the data set. So this uh, will be uh, this uh, pre-processing after once this uh, pre-processing is done, that data set can be used for visualization uh, in VV and VH and other polarization format, depending on what the user is using, it can also create uh, and uh, it can also create a color composite depending on the data set uh, on the timelines of the data set. And we can also do a uh, basically SAR unit conversion within ArcGIS. These can, as mentioned, can be used to analyze basically the landslide classifications or flood mapping and 
uh, analysis uh, uh, and uh, detects many changes that may have occurred within the cropping season or urbanization. So let me now demonstrate uh, how these uh, data sets, uh, say radar data set or the LIDAR data set can be used within a mosaic data set. So uh, these are the imagery uh, to imagery uh, tool set that is provided to the user within the uh, within the geoprocessing tool as well. We have the image analyst extension that will uh, allow the user to do change detection, the uh, basic classifications, depend and the pattern recognition. We can also perform deep learning and feature extraction uh, deep learning uh, using the image analyst extensions. We can do various map functions and map algebra or maths uh, or raster calculations using the same. As I mentioned, motion imagery, which is one of the key aspect in many, many areas of uh, application of remote sensing can also be used within the uh, image analyst uh, extension of ArcGIS. Coming, uh, coming further, we can uh, do a multidimensional analysis of say a generation of trend uh, to uh, predicting uh, to further predicting or uh, using the trend of how the uh, data set would be. And finally, we have the SAR data, uh, SAR data uh, module that have been added within the ArcGIS Pro uh, 3.4. So here, uh, as can be seen, I'm uh, for an area of, uh, I'm, you, I'm taking the uh, image of uh, Goa, and I have a point cloud, a uh, point cloud image of uh, this uh, point cloud image of a very small area in South Goa. So this point cloud, uh, once I load this uh, point cloud data set within my uh, within my uh, uh, within my R Pro, you can see there are set of tools that have been activated, which helps me to work with this LIDAR data set. LIDAR data set. So this la uh, last data set, as we know, can be classified uh, depending on the uh, ground points and the non-ground points to DEM and DESM. So using the uh, ground points as my uh, filter, I can create a DEM. Uh, so uh, for uh, directly uh, using this, I can create my DEM and also uh, in the similar note, I have also created the DSM for the area. Now, uh, and, uh, NDSM is, uh, we can also generate an NDSM, which is nothing but, uh, uh, which is generated basically to eliminate the influence of the noise and obtain the accurate relative uh, elevation difference between the object ground surface. It basically proves to be very effective uh, indicator on for improving the classification accuracy. Once these are done, we can then further uh, go on to visualize these uh, into my uh, 3D uh, 3D scene. So as can be seen, I have the uh, lidar. Uh, I have that lidar data set onto my 3D scene, and I can see that uh, and with and with the RGB data set. So uh, moving on. We can also uh, use this uh, data set for my area or volume calculation. So supposing some of the uh, very uh, common uh, application of LIDAR data set is in mining. So we can use that for volumetric analysis or land use land cover. So you can also perform the, uh, the so you can also derive the surface uh, aspects or contour slope depending on the same. And we can also uh, further classify the uh, LIDAR data set based on uh, buildings or the noise or based on height, depending on the user's requirement. We can also apply our deep learning models onto uh, in LIDAR using this uh, data set. So finally, uh, I would like to uh, show how we can use this mosaic data set in the uh, mosaic data set with my uh, LIDAR data. So as it can be seen, I have two, uh, I have these two, Data set that are uh, these two data set of my uh, image uh, of my image. So initially we were seeing uh, we have created the DSM and the EMs of only the upper part of the uh, my lidar data set. Now if supposing uh, I have this additional data set that I uh, that is for the uh, for the area that is uh, in the bottom, or we have side images of or side lidar points that we get later in the uh, later during the uh, usage of our. Uh, usage of the application. So what uh, we cannot just create DEM and DSM uh, every time we get the same. So what uh, the RGIS Pro uh, gives you is the uh, 
mosaic data set. So this offering will help you to have both these uh, data set. So if I uh, now see, we have both the data set that, have, uh, that were added within the data set. And now if I want to work either with any one data set that is available, so supposing I can do a select by attribute and I can work with only one data set that is available to me. So, uh, so using the same, I can uh, basically work on only the bottom, uh, on only one image that is available to us. So using, uh, so uh, such is the uh, cap uh, capability of Mosaic data set that if a user wants, he can work with the entire data set of an area of interest at a time, or he can do it individually depending on the application he or she is working with. So here I have created the DE, uh, the mosaic data set of the DEM that is there for my LIDAR, uh, from my LIDAR. And using the same, I have uh, created, uh, I'm now uh, going to, I've now created using the raster functions that are available to me, I can uh, generate a contour for the same. So uh, here, as can be seen, my contours have uh, for the, uh, in the interest of time, I've already created the contours for my mosaic data set. And I can also generate a shaded relief for the entire data set. So now these uh, data sets, now since it is created using the raster function is not stored, the user depending on his application can either uh, save this contour or shaded relief uh, to the location where he or she wants to. You can also uh, do the same using a function editor tool that has already uh, that is uh, given. So if uh, there is a uh, there is a workflow that the user wants to perform with this point cloud data set, he or she can also do so using the uh, function editor using the raster functions for the same. So this is how uh, very briefly I've told you about how we can work with lidar data set and lidar uh, basically last data set can be uh, combined within the mosaic data set to work. Let uh, now uh, once this is uh, once this is done we can basically publish the entire data set the point cloud uh, point cloud for the entire organization and create a web application of the same and can do a simple analysis for the uh, on the web scenes as well. So uh, next, let us talk about these uh, SAR capabilities of uh, the uh, ACRO. Uh, ACRO. So uh, as I have already shown, uh, so uh, these are the few uh, pre-processing and uh, other uh, tools that have been uh, in, uh, that have been introduced to Arc uh, to Arc Three. Uh, and uh, using this data set, what I have done is I have basically created the uh, my entire model wherein this model will allow me to do an orbit correction, then the radiometric calibration and the speckle and finally convert my uh, uh, backscatter into SAR data units, that is D. So the user uh, need not have to do all these pre-processing for each and every uh, image. He or she can build such models uh, that can run on uh, the desired input that he or she wants. So uh, here I with you, uh, I'm taking the area of Manipur wherein the recent flooding have occurred. So uh, since the optical imagery for these, uh, for, the, uh, for, uh, for the monsoon periods are very uh, tough to get, I'm using a SAR data set for these flood modeling events. So uh, the one, uh, the uh, basic, uh, basic uh, workflow is that I've used a pre and a post event uh, for flood mapping. So here I'm using the, uh, well, this is my pre event that is before the flooding. And this is the uh, after event that have occurred. So as can be seen, there are areas wherein we have uh, we have flooded zones. Now the the uh, now this needs to be uh, calculated and this needs to be extracted for better planning and uh, flood mapping uh, response uh, applications, etc. So using the uh, using the uh, chain detection as in or the other tools that are available, I have generated the flood map for the entire data set. So as can be seen within this area earlier, this area before the pre-event, this area was completely, uh, say we can see it was not flooded, but uh, after uh, say around the July 7th of this year, uh, this area got inundated. Now this inundation was easily captured using the, uh, using the workflow that I just showed and some additional raster analytics. 
so um this is all this is how uh, we can say that uh, remote sensing data set or imagery can be used uh, it from any content be it in any format can be used and worked on with the uh, worked on on Artflow. so with this i can do over to Anish. Thank you. Thank you, Manju, sir. So now I request uh, Mr. Vivek Rawat for the question and answer session. Over to you, Vivek. Thank you, Ganesh, and thank you, Manjusha, for such an insightful presentation. Uh, few people have requested for the recording of the webinar. Well, we'll soon be sharing the recording of this webinar with you uh, on your email address. And alternatively, you can visit and subscribe to History India's YouTube channel as well for recording of this uh, webinar and also of the uh, past webinars. Uh, right. So uh, I see a few of the questions have been answered by panelists over the chat. So let me take a few one. Uh, uh, so the first question is, how can it specifically help in traffic analysis? And does Pro have uh, any real time traffic layer as a base map? Uh it can be uh, used when traffic uh, uh, live feed. Uh, we have a different uh, module for the same, but we don't have a base map uh, to support the live uh, traffic. Okay. Uh, the next question is: Is there a difference between multi-dimensional data model and voxels? If so, what what distinguish uh, voxel models from the multi-dimensional data? So uh, basically, a voxel layer represents a multi-dimensional volumetric uh, and uh, regularly graded data. So the data source from voxel data is uh, basically NetCGF itself, and uh, we can, uh, the ArcPro provides multiple geoprocessing tools uh, with respect to the voxel layers also. So uh, supposing if we have a rainfall data set uh, that can be viewed in uh, using the uh, voxel layers itself. So multi-dimensional in the sense, if we have a rainfall data that can be used or a sea surface temperature. That can be used as a mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the next question is: Are there any APIs to specifically integrate raster files with other web page or map platform? Yes, there are APIs to do so. Uh, next question is: uh, Can we use RDS Pro for hyperspectral image classification using deep learning techniques? Uh, for uh, hyperspectral uh, using deep learning technique is possible. Uh, okay. Um, what methods are available for spectral analysis? For spectral analysis, as of now, we have the spectral uh, uh, indices that are available. We can uh, the user can also create his or her own uh, indice if he uh, if he wants. So uh, only uh, on the uh, on one side we have uh, the uh, spectral indices such as the, for the NDVI and for the vegetation. We, then we have for the snow cover. Then we have for water indices. Uh, and if apart from these, and there are many others such as. Uh, uh, the burnt area index and ferrous uh, for ferrous uh, uh, this thing ferrous uh, index but if the user wants he can or he or she can customize the same okay um let me see um okay so there is a question which is what are the benefits of using using dynamic imagery the uh, benefits of using dynamic imagery is uh, that uh, we can basically you know, uh, so dynamic imagery can be used uh, basically for uh, the uh, when we publish or share the dynamic imagery layer, uh, you can add it, uh, basically the query and analyze it on the uh, basically server side. So if the user doesn't want, he or she cannot, uh, I mean, he or she doesn't have to store it or something, it is done on the fly dynamically. Okay. Uh, we have a question which is kindly explain about SAR processing tool set and its various tools in brief, if possible. So 
uh, as I've shown, uh, there are many pre-processing tools ha that I have already been uh, shared, so such as radiometric calibrations and the noise removal, that is the speckle, uh, then the speckle uh, filter, uh, speckling, uh, that is very common uh, with the SAR data set. So all these pre-processing can be done uh, using Sentinel uh, for Sentinel-1 as of now. And then we can also convert the backscatter of Radarsat 2 using uh, using the Sentinel SAR uh, raster functions. Uh, uh, can we process mobile mapping data in ArcGIS Pro? Yes, we can. Question: Which channel we have to subscribe? So, uh, Praveen, you can you know you can go to YouTube and search for Isri India, and um, you will have our channel uh, ESRI India, and it will have all the recordings for past webinars. I see most of the question has been answered, so I'll take the last one. Uh, participant, if your uh, question has not been taken up, or if you still have any questions after this webinar, you can write to us at info.esi.in, and um, we will respond back to you. So, Manisha, the last question for today is, what approach did you use to determine flood indentation? So, uh, here, uh, since I only had two pre- and post-event, I... Uh, did a simple raster calculation, but the user can also work with the chain detection uh, module that is available with the R Pro. Okay, uh, thank you, Manjusha. Um, 